First question came from Nova. He said, what's good, Engraven? Nova here with another two questions I'm sending this after watching your post-game thoughts. And we are currently 3-3, three and three, which sums up our team, if you ask me. It sure does. I, I, I've said, I said it myself, too. Ravens could have easily been 6-0. But Ravens also could have easily been 0-6. Oh but they're 3-3, three and three, so that perfectly defines the Baltimore Ravens. Anyway, he said, we have valleys and peaks in our game, and we're so inconsistent that it's frustrating as a fan. Yes, I agree. The Ravens just, they cannot close out consistently. They've been consistently inconsistent. We're closing out games. We're finishing out games. And the worst part, I, I hate repeating it, but that stat, it sticks with me. They little, literally di double-digit leads in every single game. But you lost three out of six, and you had double-digit leads in every single game. Two of those games that you lost, you had a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter and a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter with six minutes left. They, they got to be much better at finishing. But anyway, uh, continuing, he said, uh, I feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel with our guys coming back in a few weeks. That, that should certainly help. Uh, he said, Houston, Bowser, Bateman, Gus, Ajabo should all return to give better overall performances, just as we've seen from Peters, Stanley, and to a slight extent, J.K. Dobbins. That's true. That's true. Um, you would hope that those guys can all contribute in some way, shape, form, format, whatever, uh, to help the Ravens finish the job. Uh, he said, uh, first question is, oh, we need to get to the first question. <laughs> he said, do you think with us getting these guys back and others, it would help the inconsistencies we keep seeing on the field? Can they help sustain leads and prevent our offense from going cold for quarters at a time? They can certainly help, especially Bateman. Uh, especially Bateman getting him back um, But I mean the offense They were going cold with Bateman in there But having him could certainly help them Try to get out of that nasty trend uh, Having J.K. and Gus back Like fully back um, That'll help a lot in the short yardage game I mean uh, one big suggestion That I've seen a lot of Ravens fans say Hey wait, why not use Pat Ricard in the short yardage game Why not just simplify stuff Why not? Like I was talking to my guy uh, Justin P On his channel yesterday and he said, man, they got Pat Ricard. What, is, is I formation like illegal or something on the goal line? Why don't they just line up in I formation? Lamar in the center, Pat Ricard at fullback, and whoever at running back, whether it be J.K. Dobbins, whether in the future to be Gus Edwards, whoever it may be, they just run it straight up. But they don't do that. They, they tend to get very cute. Um, so, yeah, those guys are definitely helping. Then as far as the pass rush, if you you having these big leads, if you're establishing these big leads, then that – doesn't necessarily always force the other team to, to pass the ball, but it can. And when they're passing the ball, that means your pass rush got to be rushing and passing. If the, you have better pass rushes and more pass rushes, people can be uh, have more energy, and people can just be better. You can have better depth and more depth and quality depth. So that's that. Uh, anyway, he says, second question is more of a suggestion regarding realistic trade targets. I have three in mind, so let me know what you think of each of them. First off, is that receiver in Carolina? No, nah, not DJ, as much as I love it for it to happen, but Terrence Marshall. Oh, <laughs> you threw me off with this one, because I thought it was getting ready to say Robbie Anderson. I was going to be like, well, he did send his question yesterday, the same day that Robbie Anderson got traded, but yeah. Uh, Terrence Marshall, he's still on his rookie deal, six foot two, and is in the doldrums of Carolina. And this is before Rule was fired. I can see B more making an offer for him with a mid round pick and seeing what he can do. I, my opinion, I, I would not want them to go for that. Reason being, I don't think that the Ravens are in good territory. And, and I thought this from before the season even started. Um, I don't think the Ravens are in good position to be trying to develop uh, wide receivers right now. I just, I never was a big fan of it going into the season. I mean, I obviously hope that it will work out, but I was never a big fan of it going into the season. That's why I wanted the Ravens to get proven guys because it's like, hey, Lamar's in a contract year. You haven't gotten him high quality proven talent his entire time here. And it's, it's just been embarrassing. Um, but why not do it now when he's in his contract year? This is the cheapest that Lamar is ever going to get for the Baltimore Ravens. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't really be a fan of this one. Um, he said, uh, duh, duh, duh. oh, Lamar has Bateman, Duve, and tight ends as his best pass catchers. And by now, I think it has become clear he needs uh, perimeter help and another person to help him in the red zone as well as being a low-risk move. Second idea is, oh, well, oh yeah, no. Nah. So, I mean, low-risk move, yeah, it could be because he's still on his rookie deal. You probably wouldn't have to give up much to get him. But 
I don't think the Ravens can be into this. I don't think they should be into this low risk stuff when it comes to receiver. I mean, they bringing in Deshaun Jackson. That's a low risk move right there. Um, I don't think they should be into this low risk, low risk move. You need to be in the high risk stuff because you you got to spend, man. You got to spend or be willing. Like whether it's spending the money, spending the draft, whatever it may be, man. Because this like it, they, it ain't been it from how they've been doing it, man. Uh, he said, second idea is a running back. Now, I know we have, like, four once Gus comes back. Ain't it, like, five? Yeah. Gus, it'll be Gus. Well, first we got Mike Davis, uh, Ken Drake, uh, J.K. Dobbins, and Justice Hill should be back maybe this week. Gus Edwards could possibly be back maybe this week. So we'll have five running backs. And then Beatty on a practice squad, too. Uh, he said, uh, now we have, like, four once Gus comes back, but Davis looks like a spell back at best. Drake is consistently inconsistent with his play. J.K. is seeing less time uh, than Judy Winslow. Uh, so why not get someone who is dynamic with the run and has great bursts, uh, with the, which is another low-risk option? I'm thinking Montgomery from Chicago. Herbert has honestly looked better on recent weeks, and there, and I think that uh, he's on the last year of his rookie contract. Yeah, Montgomery is on the last year of his rookie contract. With Chicago also in rebuild mode, it couldn't hurt unless J.K. comes back into starting, but who knows? Ah. Uh, it could, uh, but no, I wouldn't really be in favor of them trading for a running back. Like, no, I, I'd much rather just keep the guys that they got. So anyway, he said third is a corner that isn't too far. William Jackson from the Commanders. Um, he also is riding the pine and looks to be going soon from D.C. And we could use a third veteran cornerback. As a man team, we run zone coverage way too much. As you mentioned, and he's familiar with AFC North football coming from Cincinnati. He also requested a trade and he flourishes in man, which is why the D.C. move hasn't worked as they play more zone. May have to eat some of that contract, but we're full of gone for the season. It's a chance we can take if we want to take that step forward defensively and get back to our man roots. He's most likely going to be cut next year, so I feel he's obtainable for a draft pick. Anyway, love to hear your opinions, and as always, keep up the great work. You and the family stay safe and always keep it clean. I appreciate it, Nova. Thank you, man. Um, that one I wouldn't be mad at, um, just depending on the contract, though. Because uh, if he got, like, some crazy contract and this would be the Ravens allocating that to the defense, I just feel like more should be put uh, to the offense as far as getting a, a playmaking veteran, not old veteran, but prime veteran wide receiver. Um, but, I mean, it's it's really looking like that's probably not going to happen anyway. But with William Jackson, um, yeah, like you mentioned, he's a man corner. Uh, and Ravens, they've been struggling. Their third corner has been struggling because that's where the team's been going at. They've been going there. Like, they get Marlon Like, last game, they got Marlon Humphrey a little bit. Um, Marcus Peters, uh, not really. Um, but they really attack. They This season, they've been attacking the young corner, Brandon Stevens. They've been attacking Pepe Williams. They've been attacking those guys. So, um, if you could get back to man, and, hey, I know it would take Pepe off the field a bit because you would have a veteran corner there. But you would have uh, somebody who's been there, done that, and, and could upgrade your secondary. Yeah. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. And let's get into this next one because it, it was really funny. Came from Nazarene. This was during the game on Sunday. First, he said, hey fam, much love and respect. Just checking in. I'm hitting you while the game is still on. I still got us blowing them out. We are literally just better. Our defensive coordinator is better. And Greg might be better than their offensive coordinator. Wink is rushing DBs against Ronnie Stanley. Ha <laughs> ha. And rushing the rookie Kayvon Thibodeau against tight ends like they are secondary blockers. And then a couple hours later, he sent, I am embarrassed. Next question came from my guy, Jason. He said, a minute 43, three timeouts, 20 to 17. And for whatever reason, we don't run the ball in order to burn clock in Giants timeouts. Yes, Lamar has to own that interception. Bad snap, broken play aside, he has to, for sure. Uh, but you probably got the best rushing play you have ever going to get uh, out of King and Drake. And clearly you recognize this because you were comfortable keeping JK sideline. But Harbaugh and Roman insist on asking Lamar to play hero ball when it isn't called for. And this is why people come for their heads. 
Everything we did to close out last week against Cincinnati should have been done in this scenario. There's no need to force passes with a lead, which doesn't lead to a strip sack because the defense sees you're obviously passing. Mm. Well, the, the strip sack, that was uh, when they were down. That was when they were down. Uh, they had to come back and get the game winning drive. But, yeah, I think um, I think they, they were just trying to put the game away. They are just trying to put the game away. Uh, the snap messed everything up from jump. Uh, then Lamar, he ended up throwing that bad pick with two guys on Pat Ricard. Um, so it, it was just, just a mess of a play. Um, and then he said, it's now a fair question. And to be fair, oh, no, he said, I'm done. It's now a fair question. And to be fair, I've tried my absolute best to avoid it. Are the Ravens actively setting Lamar up for failure? Given the way these losses have occurred, I hate to be that person. But Hobbs and Roman are just, and he couldn't even come up with a word to describe it. Um, are they setting him up for failure? I don't think the Ravens would be setting him up for failure, but they're certainly not fully equipping him for success. This question came from a guy, A.W. Juice, man. He says, shaking my head, tisk tisk. LOL, Engraven, I don't know, man. I feel like you and I need to stand back to back and have a sword and shield in hand, but not against the other 31 teams, but against our own fan base because I agree with you 99.9%. .9 we need to upgrade a wide receiver. Most Ravens fans hate that idea, and tra trading for that guy is frustrating. Ravens think that they can pull a fast one on the league, but it's blowing up in their face. No top wide out to help them put up points and no top pass rushers to help prevent points. I'm sorry, but Owe is not it. He's a project player. Houston and JPP are past their prime and can't play forever, and they're on their last leg. Rashad Bateman is another version of Sammy Watkins. Think about it. Oh, whoa, 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 hold up there, buddy. He has been some time, though. I ain't calling him no Sammy Watkins right now, though. Hold up now. But anyway. Uh, he said, hurt last year, hurt this year. A tier one guy is available all the time, or most of the time. We will never sniff a Lombardi trophy if we do not upgrade at wide receiver. In addition to pass rush, Ravens are shooting themselves in the foot. They're not pulling uh, one over on the league and thinking they can outsmart the cap by only adding to the tight end position. <laughs> By only adding to the tight end position and secondary while neglecting the wide receiver and pass rush, they do not have anything to show for it at all. Trade for DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson. Well, we know what time this question came in. Um, plus, I want to I wanna be a sideshow Bob plushy and have Robbie sign it. Oh, because of his hair and the drip, man. <laughs> he said, well, but roll the dice on Justin Jefferson after this season. Hey, <laughs> now you know. That ain't going down, man, because if they got Justin Jefferson, they would have to pay Justin Jefferson, and they ain't paying no receiver like that. Oh, this is a different one. Next question came from my guy, Martin. He said, should EDC try to trade for Bozeman? His contract is cheap. He's very, very familiar with the system, and this will be the ultimate stay ready so you don't have to get ready with what the Panthers paid. That's right up EDC's alley, and he probably wouldn't have to trade more than a six-round pick. I'm not saying this because of the one bad snap Linderbaum had. Uh, more of it couldn't hurt to have more quality depth. No, man, you no, you don't. No, nah. you got uh Cologne Castillo, and I mean, where you gonna put him at? At guard? Who's our Who's our left guard right now? Why am I forgetting? My mind is like blanking right now. Oh, Ben Powers, Ben Powers. So nah, they they ain't bringing back Bradley Bozeman. Next question came from my guy Marco. He said, Engraving was good. Another disappointing loss and plenty of blame to go around. I love Lamar and rock with Lamar, and he does more to help us win than lose games, but you know, hey, again, like I told you, every time somebody starts with that, I love Lamar, but you know where it's headed. Uh, but uh, a fifth-year quarterback should know to throw the ball away at that point or take a set. Nah, yeah, he, he should have just thrown it away. Just thrown it away. Um, and I think with that, that play – he had done so much to keep the play alive. I think he just still wanted to keep the play alive. Cause like I said during the stream, like we've seen him make those plays so many times where he keeps it alive doing some crazy stuff. Um, but this was not a good one to keep it alive for. He should have dated that play. Um, but it it happened. It happened. It was a bad interception though. Uh, but anyway, he said he's also throwing off the back foot while falling backwards more often now. And every time it's resulted in a turnover. Uh, I get, yeah, that, that the back foot throws, that's, um, you can't do those, man. I remember when uh, Flacco, he had started getting into the habit of those. Uh, a lot of it has to do with pressure. Um, but the, the back foot throw, and again, it's the same thing with the back foot throws. We've seen him make a lot of those as well. Um, I remember one that, one that I remember off the top of my head is the one in the Browns game, the four interception Browns game, uh, where he threw off his back foot 
to Mark Andrews. Lamar was running around. He faced pressure, running around, running around, running around. Uh, and then he threw off his back foot to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is in his own touchdown. But um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's a habit that you don't want to get into. Just continuously throwing off your back foot. Because if you throw off your back foot, you can't get as much velocity on it as you would if you just stand in there. Or if you step into the throw. So, yeah, man. Anyway, he said, I get LJ shouldn't have to be perfect. Uh, but players and coaches as a team got to be better with situational football. That's true. Uh, he's His biggest problem is hero ball. And I know lack of talent pushes him towards hero ball. But no excuse enforcing it because it only hurts the team. Yeah, in that situation, yeah, it it, it, it just hurt them, period, because it turned the ball over, gave the Giants great field position, they got a touchdown, and just, yeah, it, it started the whole collapse. Um, if wide receivers can't get open or catch or the line doesn't protect, it's on them. But overthrows and poor decisions in crucial moments repeatedly is on Lamar Jackson. Just a mini rant, that's all. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of that. Uh, he said if wide receivers can't get open to catch on the line, don't protect. It's on them. Uh, but overthrows and poor decisions in crucial moments. Yeah, if, if he's over, overthrowing the ball and got protection, yeah, that ain't on nobody but him. Ain't on, on nobody but him. That, um, and yeah, the situational football for him in that, that last game, that, the pick, just a bad decision, straight up. All right, sit down for this one because we might be here for a little while. Next question came from my guy, Plex. He said some things that I've noticed. Every time we turn the ball over, something went wrong the play before. Example, uh, the Bills playoff game, Hollywood was open in the end zone, and I think either Powers or Makari, correct me if I'm wrong, got blown up, and Lamar couldn't get an accurate pass off. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a touchdown in that playoff game, and the pressure got in there, uh, and that messed up everything. And then, oh, well, let me let you finish. He said, um... Uh, da, 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 next play, uh, interception. This game, uh, third and one. We convert, but there's a penalty. Next play, bad snap and interception. Also, this game, Robinson drops a pass and we fumble the next play. Uh, <laughs> was that the? No, I thought I thought the Robinson drop happened, and I thought that was on the interception. That was that. Was that on the interception? No, I, yeah, I thought wasn't that on the interception? Either way, I don't even remember now, man. You, now you got me confused. But anyway, um, nine times out of ten, there's a critical mistake that leads to a turnover on the next play. Lamar does need to throw the ball away. Uh, he has to understand that he doesn't always have to try and make something happen. Uh, you, you tell the Ravens front office that they like Lamar. What are we giving you? You better make something. But anyway. Um, and that's probably really difficult for him to do when he actually does have to make something happen on most plays. Okay, you said it already. You said it. Okay, I should have just continued reading. Um, but this is why football, game of inches. Game of inches. Everything matters so much more. Everything is so close. Everything. It's a game of inches. And you, you, the outcome of the game can be changed by something so that you think is so small, but it could end up blowing up in your face, or it could end up working in your favor. That's why everything matters in football so much. But anyway, he said pre-snap penalties. Ooh, oh yeah, that, that's, yeah. Uh, I don't remember how we were in 2019, but I know for sure these past three seasons we have been terrible. False starts, illegal formations. I attribute this to coaching. We get to the line with 10 seconds on the play clock. We're getting the snap off with two or one second left. Players look at the clock and know we need to snap it, so they move early. Same thing with the illegal formations. Sometimes there's not enough time on the play clock to settle in and line up correctly. Lastly, lack of playmakers on the field. We ran well today, so this isn't about that. We have five linemen, two tight ends, and a fullback on the field on most plays. Outside of today and Lamar in previous games, we've ran the ball poorly. What good do what good do they do on the field if we're still running poorly? Our fullback has outsnapped our primary wideout every game. That's unacceptable. We gotta stop with this 1953 wing T offense. <laughs> this game showed how important wide receivers are. Having an elite tight end is great. But we also need guys on the outside that can make something happen. It's not going to happen, though. <laughs> Our head coach said he doesn't believe in scheming receivers open anyway. He should have been fired after the, after making that goofy statement. Oh, Harbaugh, get, Harbaugh sure give you some one-liners, won't he? Shout out to Harbaugh, though, man. He said, I'm sorry. I thought I was done. I just saw the replay of the interception, and Ricard was lined up in the slot. An obvious passing situation, and we have a fullback not only on the field, but lined up in a place he should never be. Resigning him was the worst move we made this offseason. See, when they resigned Pat Ricard, and we said it, we, we said this before they signed, re signed Pat Ricard, even though we expected them to re sign Pat Ricard, after they re signed Pat Ricard, it was confirmed that they were going to continue to run the same type of offense that they had been. 
Um, and, and it just, we didn't really expect much to change with it. Um, and now, uh, a lot did change with it because we, because they were doing a lot more passing than running. Well, simply because they couldn't run the ball. Um, but with Pat Ricard, they just, not that it's a bad thing when you have somebody do so much, but a fullback to be out there. And I know a lot of times he's out there being a, an extra blocker, an extra offensive lineman, so to speak. But to have him out there, especially in crunch time, uh, that ha, ha, every time you have him out there, yeah, you want that extra blocker. But then that takes away one playmaker off the field. That takes away a receiver off the field. It takes away a tight end off the field. It takes away somebody. It takes away a pass catcher off the field. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> He said, uh, resigning him was the worst move we made this offseason. He's not a bad player. He's good at what he does. He's counterproductive to where we need to be going as an offense, though. That is such a great way to explain Pat Ricard because he's not bad at all. He's not bad at all. He actually got, he got some good hands for a fullback now. Great blocker, all that. But, yes, counterproductive to where we need to be going on offense. He's also getting paid a little under $4 million a year between him, Boyle, McCary. That's $15.4 million. There goes the money for a receiver. McCary is getting paid five mil to be a backup. That's a bad investment. With McCary, I, I didn't really think it was a bad investment simply because he, like, especially with Ronnie Stanley. Ravens know Ronnie Stanley. We know Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley, he, he's injury prone um, and dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his entire career. A um, little knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone type of injuries, nothing long-term until 2020. But then 2020 ended up being a two-year injury. Um, so with that, them re-signing Pat McCary, I ain't had no problem with that because it gave them somebody that they know can come in and start uh, all along the offensive line, literally all along the offensive line. So I don't, I don't think that was a bad investment. Um, and he said, uh, it's time to start looking at old Eric. Uh, these draft picks and contracts are questionable. Yeah, a lot of them are. Uh, what bona fide stud has he drafted in the first? Matter of fact, which player can you currently say that will pick up their fifth-year option and give a contract extension to? Oof. First round picks, just Patrick Queen, Rashad Bateman. Oh, Tyler Linderbaum. I, th I think they'll pick up his. Um, oh, Kyle Hamilton. Adafi away. Well, the jury's still out on most of them, but we'll, we'll see how it goes, buddy. Uh, he said, um, He said, uh, let, let's examine. Hollywood is already gone. Yep, PQ, I highly doubt. Yeah, right now, no. It's not looking like it. Bateman and Oway are question marks. That's true. It's too early to tell for Linderbaum, but I think he might be the one. Oh, I, I guess I should have kept reading because we're on the same page. Um, where we go? I, I, done lost, I done lost where we was at. Oh, there we go. He's drafted complimentary, play, complimentary players in the first round. Oh, you ain't even. Uh, oh, you must have forgot about Kyle Hamilton then because he ain't even mentioned him. But he said, we're still looking for that number one receiver. We're still looking for an outside linebacker. We still need a pass rusher. Getting role players in the first round is a problem. You may have noticed that I left Kyle Law. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Okay, sorry. I thought you forgot him. Let me just keep reading and shut up, even though you know that's impossible. Uh, you may have noticed that I left off uh, Kyle Hamilton. I'm trying to temper expectations for him, but my goodness, the boy can't get right. What is he good at? It's not speed. It's not tackling. It's not coverage. It's not awareness. We drafted a safety at 14 that's currently lacking all of the abilities to be a safety. That's like drafting a receiver in the first round that has problems with catching and route running. Cough, cough, Brashad Perry. Don't, don't do my guy Brashad like that. We ain't here to do my, my guy Bashar like that. He over there in Tampa doing his thing. He done did his thing with Cleveland. He did his thing with, I think he was with Detroit for a little bit. Or maybe it was Chicago. I forget. But my guy's over there doing his thing. But anyway, he said, I'm officially done. I apologize for the rant, but I greatly appreciate the safe space you've created uh, for us. No, I appreciate y'all sharing stuff like that because it enlightens everybody. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, in Raven? Tough loss to the Giants. This is going to have to stop. When are the Ravens going to get with the program and bring in the number one receiver? Lamar, the truth, cannot continue playing with one player on offense. That play, if you can remember, that they double-teamed Andrews and no one was open. He doesn't have much to play with. He spent all this money on defense and more toward the secondary, and they are one of the worst in the league. They've been getting better. Um, and statistically, they continue to improve. But in last game, overall, yards-wise, good job. Situational-wise, yeah. Um, he said, uh, make this make sense. I can definitely say this is... If they continue going on with these free agency signings with not getting a young, proven wide out. Lamar the Truth can have all the good stats, but we will be on the outside looking in every year. Because it's so difficult watching a team that's uh, oh fall, falling apart weekend after weekend. Love your team. Keep it clean. Appreciate it. So, yeah, again, philosophical type stuff, man. Philosophical type stuff. Uh, that, that, that's, that's all it is, man. That's Ravens philosophy. And 
They seem to be sticking to it. Next question came from my guy Garrett. He said, Ain't Graven, remember when I asked if the Ravens might be shopping Nick Boyle? Because he played a lot in the preseason. He sure did. And it was so weird. He played so much in the preseason. So it was like late into the games, too. And I know people say, Oh, well, Nick Boyle said that he wanted to play a lot in the preseason. But he played a lot. And then in the regular season, he'd been playing not. Uh, but anyway, he said, Because he played a lot in the preseason. I've only seen him on special teams. Do you think it's time we try and trade for. Trade him for DJ Moore. <laughs> Panthers ain't taking no Nick Boyle for no DJ Moore. Uh, he said, we need to go all in for Lamar Jackson now. If not, what's the point? Thanks for reading my question. Stay safe and blessed. Team, keep it clean. Um, they, no, nah, I, they ain't taking no Nick Boyle, man. They, they ain't taking, I mean, if they, if Ravens were to trade um, for Nick, I mean, for DJ Moore, which they won't. Um, if they were to trade for Nick, DJ Moore, like, Panthers, like, I mean, unless Ravens gave them a boatload of draft picks, they wouldn't be taking uh, Nick Boyle at all. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, hey, fam, I got to know why Ravens stopped going to Isaiah Likely. Roman doesn't trust his offense like Harbaugh doesn't trust the defense. How much longer will this continue? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's just Ravens got, <laughs> they, they just got a lot of inconsistencies everywhere, straight up. So much inconsistencies. They they are uh, um it, they seem so close, man. They're so close. Cause again, double digit leads. They doing something right, but then they start doing something wrong. I think a lot of it has to do with adjustments. A lot of it has to do with adjustments. Um and like people mentioned earlier, situational situational coaching, situational execution as well. Cause it, it's, it's a lot is on the coaches, a lot is on the players too. Uh you can't be making silly mistakes, man, because they cost you big time. And his other question was, uh, being a longtime Raven fan and seeing year after year what these Ravens do from the top to the bottom, it has been consistently the same thing since the beginning of the organization. Ozzie Newsom was the Ravens GM from 96 to 2018. EDC, who came up through the Ravens organization, learned an, appre an apprentice uh, under a great football mind. I give Ozzie his flowers on and off the field, but as time progresses, things change. Football has evolved into something more advanced than the mind frame of the Ravens organization. I love Smash Mouth football, but in today's NFL, teams have to evolve to keep up. Uh, moving on from the old is hard and it's difficult. Maybe it's time for the Ravens to move on from Ozzie and the rest of the front office and start something up, uh, so start something more up to speed. Recruiting better players, keeping players that are vital to success, uh, making better decisions when it comes to who is leading this team. Ravens need to change uh, to accompany this great organization. Thanks for the channel. Sorry for the length of my rant. LOL. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Um, they definitely need some change. Uh, would they need to get rid of Ozzy? I don't think so. Um, but they do need to um, some got to give as far as the way that they do things, the way that they operate. And this is not anything new. This is not like some new revelation that's coming up in a lot of Ravens fans' head just because the Ravens have been losing, even though they're three and three. So they they don't they don't lost just as much as they won, even though it doesn't feel like it. But People just have been wanting the Ravens to get with the program. NFL literally tells you every year, hey, offenses, go off. Hey, offenses, we are going to penalize the defense for looking at you the wrong. If they even look at you the wrong way, it's a 15-yard penalty. There you go, automatic, first down. And the Ravens are like, no, we don't want to take advantage of that. Receivers, what are those? No, I love how somebody mentioned the other day, they feel like with the Ravens, the only reason that they even have receivers on the roster is because it's a requirement. When they said that, I was like, ooh. So Ravens just really got to get with the program, man. The philosophy has got to be shifted. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Like 